Barnaby will introduce us to a couple who had so much fun on their vacation, they wrote a book about it. That's later on your 24-hour News 8. At Barnaby. In a second, we're going to meet the folks who live inside this house. The reason is they just came back from vacation and they had so much fun, they wrote a book about it. Imagine that. Coming up, we'll hear their story. On your vacation, it's quite another to have so much fun that you feel compelled to write a book about it. And that's just what happened to a Grand Rapids couple, and Jerry joins us now live with their story. Hey, Jerry. Hi there. Hello there, and Heather, I love your hair. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just we like yours too, Jerry. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. yeah. spend extra time on it today. Hey, you know what? You think about writing a book like this, it's 100 pages long. That is a lot of work. But what's more important about this book is it's all about love. For some reason, I thought that was going to be, I remember, I, I, I expected that to be a lot bigger than it really was. This is why people take pictures when they're on vacation, so they can relive the glory of time spent together in a faraway place. But imagine how great a vacation it would have to be to inspire you to write a book about it. I'm into the in crowd. I go where the in crowd go. The magical journey began last year when Mick, who's head over heels in love with Susan, decided that they needed to experience something together that they would never forget. Just because she's the dearest thing to me and she needed to experience this. And yeah, it's my Christmas gift to her actually. Last year I gave her a plane ticket and said, we're going. And go they did. 15 cities in three weeks. And what they saw while they were there inspired them to do something that a lot of us only dream of doing. started out because I had this, my little trusty journal that I took along with me and I wrote everything down, my thoughts, each time I went into a different place and we experienced something new. While Susan was putting their time together into words, Mick was doing what he does best, putting paintbrush to canvas, translating life into pictures. Well, we went to this town expecting to spend like two hours there and we found out the bus didn't come, wouldn't come back to pick us up for about six hours and every place was closed and it started to rain and I was getting a little upset at first and then we found this uh, nice place and met these great people that could hardly speak any English until this gentleman showed up and he could explain some, uh, some things to us and he explained that the house outdoors that we were taking pictures of, which is actually a big chateau, was Picasso's chateau. It's one thing to fill a journal with impressions and sketches. It's quite another to create a book, especially if it's your first attempt at it. So they started out with something a bit smaller. And then we actually did a calendar for our family. We did about 18 calendars for Christmas. And then, then it turned back into a book because the calendar got such a great response. So uh, are you a writer? Heck no, I'm not a writer. <laughs> you are now. I know, I can't believe it. There were many nights I was up 12, 1, 2 in the morning just racking my brain. and I loved it, though. I did, even though I did complain. Mick will tell you. I did complain. I quit. <laughs> and then, when Susan thought that she finally had it done, she took it to an editor for a professional opinion. Well, he had some suggestions, shall we say, major revisions. So I had to go home and redo the whole book. But it did turn out a lot, a lot better that way. I had to uh, edit quite a bit. Add to this the fact that Mick and Susan decided to desktop publish the book themselves in their home using their computer, and, well, suddenly, all-nighters became a way of life. There was a lot of grumbling going on there for a while, you know, uh, some belly aching, but, you know, we got through it. And, uh, the but what they produced is a book that reads like a conversation with a friend about an experience that has love written all over it. It's a wonderful feeling, though, to have this book. Just wonderful. And, and Mick and I, together, is what even made it more special. I think I'm crying. Folks, if you want to get a copy of the book, you can always access it by calling the hotline. The number's on the screen, 771-9618. And just when you thought that Mick and Susan's life was pretty darn full, tomorrow night they're going to open up their home to a number of invited guests where pretty much all of Mick's art is going to be for sale. So it's going to be kind of a wild weekend for them. Who knows what the house is going to look like when all's said and done. But coming up in the next segment, we are going to talk about Mick Carlson and his art and how he's making a living at it, which I guess is the exception to the rule. Yeah, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people are doing scrapbooking, and this just sort of takes that one step further. It sure does. You, know, you sit down and journal and 
put it all together. And to home publish it, what yeah, a thing. That oh is. yeah, that's great. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Beautiful Pictures is a talent that doesn't come easily and it's even harder to make a living at it. Jerry Barnaby joins us now live with the story of a man who is living that dream. Hey, Jer. Yeah, the question is, can an artist actually make a living? Well, look at this. Mick Carlson is making such a good living, his face is on the money. I guess he's making some of that in his spare time as well. And here he is right here, an artist who really defies the odds. How long have you been an artist? Ah, uh, geez, ever since I fell off the bus. Yeah, and how long have you been uh, making a living at it? Uh, about 10 years now. See, that's a great thing. And here's uh, his partner right here, Susan Evangelista. You guys have a big kind of art gallery opening in your house this weekend. Yes. That's got to be kind of a freak out, having 100 people over. It is a freak out. Uh, ask Mick about it. I've been running around here like crazy. Oh, we got oh, that floor needs to be done. Oh, there's a piece of dust over there. You get nuts about it, but uh, I'm getting used to it. But it's great because let's take a look at some of the pictures that will be up for sale this weekend at the private party. It's by invitation only. How many years of work does this represent, Mick? Um, the majority of it is probably about five, five years. Um, but most of it maybe in the last couple of years. And you've got a gallery in Saugatuck which probably goes somewhat dormant during the winter months but thrives during the summer months. This will save folks to drive. Yeah, um, I share it with John Klein and uh, a lot of people just always want to get to Saugatuck but never do and even though it's only 30 minutes uh, it's nice to actually have people see my work in our home. And it's a great thing it also represents some of the time spent in Europe as does your book that we just showed in the first segment and a lot of it I must say and that's a mural that you just finished downstairs eh? Yeah, yeah um, just another thing I added to the list of things to do and probably wouldn't have done it if we weren't gonna have the open house but um, I had some experience when I restored that Matthias Alton so I thought well let's do a Let's do one here at our home. And check this out. I'm going to reach over here real quickly because this is one of the benefits of being involved with an artist. Susan, hold this out. This is actually a valentine yes. that Mick made for you? Yes, it is. And uh, he, this is my valentine card. And I said, honey, I hope you don't mind, but I, I have to put this on the floor because it's, it's so beautiful. I want to push, portray it as soon as people come in, they see it. And uh, isn't it gorgeous? Yep. It's Mick art right here. I love it. My Picasso. <laughs> cool. Hey, you know what, folks? If you want more information about uh, picking up the book, which is a chronicling of their European adventure, you can always do that by calling the hotline. The number is on the screen, 771-9618. But uh, the party this weekend will be private, but you can always catch Mix Art if it appeals to you at the uh, gallery in Saugatuck. What's it called? The uh, John Klein Gallery. John Klein Gallery, and it's right there on the waterfront? Yep, it's uh, in the Dockside Market. Fantastic. Well, hey, I know it doesn't mean half as much when I give it to you, but hold on to that. <laughs> There's your Valentine there for you. I'm sure she liked it much more the first time around. Right. Yeah. Isn't that nice, though? It, it is, is great. Very nice. Yeah. Lots Putting all men to shame right there. Yeah, we like that. All right. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks. Okay, see you later. Occasion, we usually have some pictures to remind us of all the fun we had. But a local couple decided they needed much more than just snapshots, as we see in this edition of Barnaby's World. Under the in crowd, I go where the in crowd goes. Mick Carlson is a local artist who usually puts his creative energies onto the canvas. But one day, he had a brilliant idea of another variety, and it involves a woman named Susan. It's because she's the dearest thing to me, and she needed to experience this. And, yeah, it's my Christmas gift to her, actually. Last year, I gave her a plane ticket and said, we're going. And go they did. Fifteen cities in three weeks. And what they saw during that whirlwind tour inspired them to do what many of us only dream of doing. Started out because I had this, my little trusty journal that I took along with me. And I wrote everything down, my thoughts, each time I went into a different place and we experienced something new. While Susan was busy keeping a journal of their adventures, Mick was recording his impressions in a way more natural to him. By sketching scenes, he would later transfer to canvas. Well, we went to this town expecting to spend like two hours there. And we found out the bus didn't come, wouldn't come back to pick us up for about six hours. And every place was closed. And it started to rain, and it's getting a little upset at first. And then we found this uh, nice place and met these great people that could hardly speak any English. So this gentleman showed up, and he could explain some, uh, some things to us. And he explained that the house outdoors that we were taking pictures of, which was actually a big chateau, was Picasso's chateau. Before they left for Europe, they had this idea, a dream really, that they might want to write a book about their experiences, but a book seems like such a massive undertaking. And then we actually did a calendar for our family. We did about 18 calendars for Christmas, and then, then it turned back into a book because the calendar got such a great response. So uh, are you a writer? 
Heck no, I'm not a writer. <laughs> you are now. I know, I can't believe it. Not one to shy away from a challenge, Susan worked late into the night for weeks on end, and then her editor got a hold of her work. So I had to go home and redo the whole book. What they produced is a book that reads like a conversation with a friend about an experience that has love written all over it. It's a wonderful feeling, though, to have this book. Just wonderful. And, and Mick and I together is what even made it more special. If you'd like to talk to Mick and Susan about their book, you can reach them by calling the hotline. The number's on the screen, 771 9618. Well, that looks really interesting, doesn't it? Nick and Susan's incredible adventure. There you go. <laughs>